Hello and it's seven o'clock. I'm Kamali Melbourne. This is a special programme where I'll be answering your questions after four objects were shot down over the skies of North America in the past two weeks. With many of the details still shrouded in mystery, the White House says China has a high altitude balloon programme, while the Prime Minister says the UK is protected. In light of the Chinese balloon programme and this recent incursion into our airspace, the United States and Canada, through NORAD, have been more closely scrutinizing that airspace. We have something called the uh, Quick Reaction Alert Force, which involves typhoon planes, which are kept on 24-7 readiness to police our airspace. But China has responded, accusing the United States of flying its own balloons over China 10 times in the past year. The US should first reflect on itself and change course rather than smear others and instigate a confrontation. Hello and good evening. Unidentified flying objects may usually be the stuff of science fiction and conspiracy theory, but in the past two weeks they've become the spark for a major diplomatic row between the United States and China after a series of suspected spy balloons were shot down over North America. Now, the White House has blamed Beijing for illegally infiltrating their airspace for the purpose of surveillance, but many of these specific details still lie shrouded in mystery. Now, throughout the day, we have been asking you to send in your questions about this, and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible in a moment. But first, let's remind you of what has happened so far. Now, four objects have been downed over North America this month. On Saturday the 4th of February, a US F-22 shot down a Chinese spy balloon off South Carolina. On Friday, another unidentified high-altitude object, which was the size of a small car, was brought down. But on Saturday, Canada's Prime Minister confirmed another unidentified object over the sparsely populated territory of the Yukon in the Canadian Northwest was brought down. And last night, a F-16 fired a missile and downed another unidentified object over at Lake Huron on the US-Canada border. Now, authorities say that the object flew near sensitive military sites and could have been used for spying. Well, in the last hour, we've had the latest from the White House. Let's take a listen. In light of the Chinese balloon program and this recent incursion into our airspace, the United States and Canada, through NORAD, have been more closely scrutinizing that airspace, including enhancing our radar capabilities, which, as the commander of NORTHCOM and NORAD, General Van Herc, said just last night, may at least partially explain the increase in the objects that have been detected. Slow-moving objects at high altitude with a small radar cross-section are difficult to detect on radar. Even objects the size of a, the Chinese spy balloon, which had a payload the size of roughly three school buses, were not picked up by previous administrations or other countries. Well, here in the UK, the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has announced a security review following the incidents in North America. And the PM has tried to reassure that the UK is prepared. Well, I want people to know that we'll do whatever it takes to keep the country safe. We have something called the uh, Quick Reaction Alert Force, which involves typhoon planes, which are kept on 24-7 readiness to police our airspace, which is incredibly important. I can't obviously comment in detail on national security matters, but we're in constant touch with our allies. And as I said, we'll do whatever it takes to keep the country safe. Now, China has retaliated, saying that the US had flown balloons over its airspace on several occasions since the beginning of last year. And a foreign ministry spokesperson says the US is trying to provoke a confrontation. It is also common for US balloons to enter the airspace of other countries illegally. Since last year, US high altitude balloons have illegally flown over China's airspace more than 10 times without the approval of Chinese authorities. The US should first reflect on itself and change course rather than smear others and instigate a confrontation. Well, we'll bring in our expert guests in a moment to answer your questions. But first, let's get the latest from our US correspondent, Mark Stone. Uh, Mark, good to have you with us. So we heard from John Kirby uh, just about uh, 10 or so minutes ago. Uh, what more did he tell us? Did we learn anything more about exactly what these objects are? 
Well, what we saw was an attempt by the White House to, to get ahead of uh, this extraordinary story and to try and put as much detail out there in the open to fill the space which is naturally at the moment, given the nature of the story, being filled by, by speculation and conspiracies. And even before John Kirby, uh, an admiral who's in charge of, uh, of uh, communications for the White House National Security Council, before he took to the podium, President Biden's spokesperson, Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, was at the podium. Uh, and up front, Said, said, with a smile on her face, there is no indication of alien or extraterrestrial involvement in the recent spate of UFOs uh, over America. Uh, she said that she loves the film E.T., uh, but there is nothing to suggest uh, that this is extraterrestrial. That, I have to say, follows a comment by U.S. Um, Air Force General uh, speaking on the record but off camera last night, where he said, um, I guess it was kind of a headline writer's dream, he said that he, nothing's ruled out. Well, that was his view. Uh, it's the view of the White House that, that E.T. has not landed. Um, but um, that's the sort of bemusing, um, amusing side of it. Much more seriously, what John Kirby did say was that they are fully aware of a very, very comprehensive Chinese surveillance balloon program. They are absolutely convinced that the first balloon that was brought down last Saturday over off South Carolina was one of those balloons, part of a surveillance program. The Chinese say it was a, uh, a weather balloon. The other three, they just don't know. What they know is that they were much smaller than the first. Uh, they were lower. Uh, one of them was as low as 20,000 feet, which is uh, well within uh, the, um, uh, the orbit that, uh, that commercial airliners fly. And the reason they took them down simply, says John Kirby, is because they were posing a potential threat to commercial air traffic, and they potentially had the ability to be able to, to gather data because they don't know what they were. There's a political dynamic to this as well. Um, the uh, administration of Joe Biden is aware that on the right of politics here, they're being accused of not taking down the Chinese, Chinese balloon quickly enough. They want to get ahead of that. They want to show that they are in control of their borders, however high uh, up those, uh, those borders uh, may well be. And the last point, Kamali, that I think is really interesting is the Chinese reaction. Um, China will want an excuse uh, for the shoot down of that first balloon, the images of, that you're looking at uh, here. They will want to be able to, uh, to retaliate and they'll need to find an excuse. Now, John Kirby was asked repeatedly, are there any American uh, surveillance craft over Chinese airspace? No, he said. He was then asked, are there any American surveillance craft around Chinese airspace? And he re repeated the answer to his first question, there are none over Chinese airspace. The question, of course, is if there are Chinese surveillance aircraft in the Pacific in areas claimed by China, then potentially we have a problem, because if the Chinese see that it is within their rights to shoot down one of those planes, then you can see how all this escalates from being a joke over ET to something much more serious. It certainly could. And Mark, thank you very much for that. And stay with us, because uh, we're going to bring in our experts now for uh, continued discussion all about this. Uh, I'm pleased to say we're joined now by Thomas Lawson, former chief of the defence staff of the Canadian Armed Forces. He was also deputy commander of the North American Aerospace Defence Command better known as NORAD. Thank you for being with us, Thomas. And Nick Pope, who is a UFO investigator for the Ministry of Defence here in the UK. Thomas, Nick, appreciate, appreciate you both being with us this evening. And let's just start off with the, the question that uh, Marcus dismissed there and Cream Pierre dismissed as well. Um, how likely is this, Nick, that this is aliens who've come here? Yeah, I don't think it's likely at all in this instance. I'm not ruling it out, of course, more generally, and NASA uh, have their own study into that going on as I speak. But I think it's very clear that this is espionage that we're dealing with here of a decidedly terrestrial uh, nature. So don't let's throw the baby out with the bathwater, but uh, I, I think all eyes should be on China and seeking a, a diplomatic uh, settlement to this, this situation. And Thomas, I guess you would agree with that. Agree uh, totally. Um, you know, it, it is of some concern, though, how the first balloon, which was up at, you know, at some point in the stratosphere, um, why these other three balloons would have been down so low. You know, the first one almost seems like an elegant espionage uh, plot. The other three are very, very clumsy. Yeah, OK, well, let's let's go to some of our questions from our viewers. And we'll start with a question from uh, uh, Connor Delaney. Uh, and Stormont, I'll stay with you if we can. So. Let's see if we can try and work out what these objects are. You've mentioned that we think they're all balloons, that certainly that large one that came down on South Carolina was a balloon. But what are these objects and where do we think that they're from? 
Well, the most likely thing is that it has come from uh, a country to the west of North America. That's the way the uh, winds flow in, uh, in this side of the world. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, you look to China, which is known to have this uh, balloon program. Uh, they've admitted to the first one, having gotten away from them and called it a weather balloon. It's possible that uh, Russia may have a program as well. It's even possible, it would be embarrassing, it's even possible that uh, these uh, craft uh, may have been launched out of another Asian nation that has yet to own up. But I think that's why politicians here in Canada and the United States are, are, are being a little hesitant uh, to uh, determine or at least announce the provenance of the, the other three, the last three objects. Yeah, and talk to us a bit about the, uh, that fact, Nick, that we're not quite sure about these other three objects. You said that this is all about espionage and your sort of experience uh, in this area. Have you come across descriptions of objects like this? Yes, I have. And uh, I, I mean, when I was doing this for the UK Ministry of Defence, we got several hundred reports each year. Uh, unfortunately, they closed their programme, I think because of the stigma around the term UFO. I, I think notwithstanding the Prime Minister's assurances about the UK's air defence network, uh, what's happened in the last few days is a very good indication that we need to reopen a uh, UFO program in the UK, because there's a lot of things out there, and anything in our airspace uh, is, is automatically a defence, national security and air safety issue. And, and if there have been gaps in our coverage because of mindset or because the radars have been calibrated the wrong way, then that needs to be addressed. OK, let's move on to the next question then. Uh, Nick, thank you for that. This is from uh, Bloodhound, who's uh, put this question to us. How do we think they're being deployed? Nick, first to you. I, well, I think, I think there's a lot of options here. Um, some, of, some of these may well have been launched from mainland China, but, uh, you, you know, I think there's been a lot of speculation recently about drones uh, launched perhaps from, from ships, whether they're Navy ships or whether they're fishing vessels, but, uh, you know, controlled by, by the PRC. So uh, th there's a lot to get into. And of course, the intelligence agencies will be looking at this right now. They may have some of the answers, not probably all quite yet. Uh, and obviously, because of the security concerns, not everything is going to be made public over the next few days, though I'm sure more will emerge. Uh, and Thomas, are you expecting, uh, as Nick said, for more to emerge, especially about perhaps how these things are, are being deployed? And what will it tell us about uh, these things and their, and their use, how they are actually being sent across North America, do you think? Well, I, I think that the efforts going on right now to uh, gather up uh, the, the remains of these uh, objects now that they've been shot down uh, are uh, all pointing to uh, gathering intelligence to answer that very question. And, uh, you know, I think as soon as the technological fingerprint comes back, uh, then uh, Canada, the United States, uh, assuming it is China, perhaps Russia, will then have some very good uh, leg to stand on when it comes to diplomatic discussions. Uh, but I, I do th as well agree with Mr. Pope that, you know, as these apertures are opened by NORAD, um, there is a greater likelihood that more of these things uh, will be found. Uh, so it's hard to tell how many are airborne now and how many. Uh, it, it may well be that the Chinese would love to call back 20 more balloons that now uh, are up in the stratosphere uh, now that they've been caught. Yeah. I wonder if they can call them back. All right, let's move on to the, to the next question that we've got. Uh, this is from Dave, and I'll start with you, Thomas, on this one, um, using your form, former fighter pilot hat, if you could, or helmet. Um, why would the US use um, such expensive missiles to bring down these craft? Yeah, I, you know, uh, to the average uh, uh, viewer, uh, it would seem like a very simple thing to bring one of these things down. It's not. Um, it, you know, I was dating back a, a couple of decades. Uh, I don't think I had a weapon I was carrying back then that would bring one of these uh, balloons down if it was up above 40,000 feet. Just too high to get up there to use guns. Uh, Heat-seeking missiles had nothing to lock onto, and uh, there was probably not enough radar cross-section from anything that was hanging from the balloon to allow me to shoot a sparrow. So I was one of the few people in Canada and the United States who was quite impressed with the fact that uh, the F-22s last week had a missile that could do that. And, and it really speaks to the technological advances that they've made with this AIM-9 uh, Sidewinder, the X model, uh, which uses infrared, but not in a way that I used to use it. It actually uses infrared to develop uh, an image 
And once it can see the image, it can track in uh, and uh, come very close to the balloon. Uh, and when it explodes, rip all kinds of holes through. So uh, I, I was very impressed with it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and quite clearly, uh, this weaponry has advanced uh, very well in recent years. Uh, Mark Stone, I want to bring you in on this, if, if I can, on that, because John Kirby was asked a, a question about the missiles that were used during that press conference. How, how did he respond and, and how is that going down? Because these missiles, they're $400,000 each. Yeah, well, politically, uh, as I said, they, they, they are keen to show that the Biden administration is um, doing what it should be doing, protecting national security, uh, even if there is only a potential threat uh, against national security. Uh, they were very, he was very pointed about the fact that the previous administration of Donald Trump uh, had not even spotted similar balloons that were, were going over, China, uh, over American airspace. Um, but th th so they're, they're very keen to, to show that they are doing something. But in terms of why they're using such sophisticated equipment to take them down, well, it kind of to repeat what what um, what was just said, this is all that is that they can use to take them down. And why they can't be more detailed about what the, what it is they're seeing? Well, the excuse for that is that the pilots of these jets are flying uh, at supersonic speed past an object that is effectively stationary. Um, f floating in the air. And so they are getting just a glimpse of, of, of what it is that they are shooting at, which is why even they, um, the eyes that are closest to the objects, are not able, able to give a detailed assessment of what it is that they're looking at. That, that on the face of it, um, it seems to be the explanation of why we, the public, don't have a greater understanding of what these, these objects are. And, and, and he was asked at one point by one of the reporters in the room there, uh, are, are we calling them balloons or are they still just objects? And he said, they're still just objects. So it raises the question, if they're not balloons, um, how, how are they airborne? I mean... I don't know the answer to that one. Well, that, that's not one of the questions from our viewers, but we'll, we'll try and get it answered anyway, Mark, because it's a good question. It's one that I've been thinking of, because John Kirby in his press conference said that they didn't seem to have propulsion systems. I mean, uh, Nick, what, do you, what did you make of that? You know, these, these things are up there without propulsion. How is, how is that operating? Well, I, I think that's one of the questions we've got to answer fairly urgently, and uh, that's why recovering as much debris as, as uh, possible is is uh, one of the urgent things to to do now. I mean, I think I don't think he was definitive on that. I think uh, the the answer, as I understand it, was um, you know they weren't yet sure what if any. So I think like like a lot of the statements, uh, he he was hedging his bets on this. I mean, obviously with balloons, whatever propulsion system there is, wind is going to play a key part. But if China has a sophisticated program with a number of different surveillance platforms, which is highly likely, then we may be looking at a mix of, of balloons, airships, drones, uh, and, and such like. And, and so have any of those got exotic, novel propulsion systems? Uh, we need to find out. And it does make you wonder as well, uh, Thomas, that if we, when they do eventually recover the debris from this, and if they do discover a propulsion system that perhaps uh, the technology they're not aware of or not uh, sure about, um, whether we'd ever find out what kind of system was being used. Yeah, I think it will become very evident uh, if indeed there was some sort of uh, propulsion system attached to the uh, payload underneath. Uh, it will become very clear. I don't think it, we're going to find any uh, new type of propulsion system. Uh, I think what we'll find out is, uh, I mean, when these balloons are being pushed along at, uh, uh, you know, 150 kilometers up in the stratosphere, um, all you can really do is slow the flight of the balloon down. Uh, it's not a dirigible uh, or a Zeppelin uh, like we know from the old days. Uh, so I, I think if indeed there was any propulsion system at all, it just would have been able to slow the, uh, the balloons, uh, the, you know, the objects uh, travel across continental U.S. and, and Canada. OK, let's move on to a question uh, then from Asher. Uh, out of the four objects shown, what does the debris show? Uh, and Mark, uh, what have we seen so far? Because obviously we've recovered some of the debris from the one that came down off South Carolina. Yeah, the, the debris... Uh 
from all four of them uh, in terms of where the debris has landed is, is in very, very different um, terrain, which is, which is causing different problems. The first one, the, the balloon that came down over uh, off the coast of South Carolina, they have managed to, uh, to recover some of the debris. They, they think that the main payload, which itself they say was the size of a small plane, um, extraordinary size, they think that's intact, mostly intact. It's in about 50 feet of water, uh, six or seven miles off the coast of South Carolina. Uh, and the process to recover that is now well underway, and they, they'll be taking that to the FBI um, labs in Quantico in Virginia, we think, where that will be analyzed. That's that. Um, the, the downing yesterday uh, in a lake off the coast of Michigan, that is in very, very deep water, uh, we, we understand. So the recovery of that will be, will be much harder. And of course, it's smaller, so that will be harder, make it hard again. Uh, it, the recovery of the, of the debris in Yukon, uh, that is in the far northwest of Canada, that's in what's being described as wilderness, uh, very sparsely populated. Even getting to it will take significant time. And then, and then the one off the coast, the northern coast of Alaska, or off the town of Dead horse uh, that is on on or under frozen ice um, depending on how thick the ice was how big the debris was that was the one that was the size of a small car um, it, it's either resting on frozen ice or, or it's cracked through it so so a very complex challenging uh, operation to recover that but what we do know is that they are sharing all that they discover with allies Tom Tugendhat, Tugendhat is the uh, the British Minister for Security who happened to be in Washington last week um, I'm pretty sure he was given a detailed secure briefing about what they discovered so far about the Chinese balloon and all that sort of information will be being shared with, with other, uh, other allies as and when they discover it. Indeed. All right, let's move on to a question, if we can, a gentleman from uh, Wayne Cutter. Um, and this is uh, about Russia and China saying that they've recently shot down similar objects in their airspace. I mean, we've seen the Chinese response earlier from the foreign ministry saying that some 10 um, air balloons from the US had passed over their airspace and they hadn't uh, taken them down. I mean, what credibility do we give, Nick, to sort of these accusations that this is happening um, in our airspace? So uh, perhaps we should, you should let it happen in yours? Well, I don't think anyone denies that pretty much everyone is engaged on uh, in espionage on everyone else, but uh, I, I'm not privy to the specifics, so I, I, I can't really speak to that. What I can say is that, of course, sometimes these sorts of counter accusations are just meant to, to muddy the waters and to deflect people from, from the real issue. Uh, you know, one is tempted to say, well, if if this is true, and, and if any have been shot down, for example, uh, show us the debris, as we've shown some of the, the debris. But uh, again, all this is happening in the shadowy world of intelligence, and, and people just obviously don't like to, to show other people what uh, hand of cards they're holding. Yeah, absolutely. And distraction tactic, would you say, uh, Thomas? And, and of course, we're talking about it being a Chinese spy balloon and, and the suggestion being that these balloons are a, a Chinese origin. But you mentioned in your first answer that we're not certain where they come from and it could well be Russia. I mean, your experience, would it be one system, do you think, that these four devices are, are a part of or could they be separate? Oh, they could well be separate. They, uh, they could be collecting different uh, types of intelligence uh, some of them could be electro optical, some of them could be infrared, some of them could be for ELINT, electronic uh, intelligence. But, uh, but I, I do think uh, to what Mr. Pope just said, I, I agree completely. Um, you know, th this is uh, typical of an authoritarian uh, nation uh, to uh, throw a smoke screen up. Uh, you know, in elected democracies, typically what we do uh, is take responsibility and then try and make it right. I mean, I, when I was the chief of Canadian Defence, if one of my vehicles, a ship, uh, an aircraft or anything else, went into someone else's sovereign territory, I would have been called on the carpet, would have answered to it, uh, and we would have gone into a diplomatic mode uh, to try and help those who had been harmed or uh, either offended or harmed uh, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, here, uh, China, while they took responsibility for sending this thing over, they called it a weather balloon. What's the big deal about that? And now uh, have brought up these uh, 10 balloons that they talk about. Uh, well, why wasn't that on the table before? Why weren't we dealing with this diplomatically uh, before? 
for. So I really do agree that that's a smoke screen and that uh, uh, the Chinese are, are using that now to dispel uh, attention uh, from what, the, what their program really does. Yeah, and let me just stick with you if I can, and Thompson, and dig, drill down into that a little bit more because obviously the concern here is that with the downing of these devices, if they are Chinese devices, that then um, suggests, as, as Mark was saying earlier, that there could be some kind of retaliation perhaps in the future. How concerned are uh, people within the security infrastructure that this could be the beginning of something that becomes like a, a tit for tat in, in some regards? Yeah, well, uh, that is the greatest worry. Uh, when you're not speaking, and by the way, uh, your viewers may be aware that uh, upon uh, the arrival of um, uh, the aircraft to shoot down uh, the, uh, the, the Chinese uh, collection balloon off of Carolina, um, Secretary Austin, Defense Secretary, uh, put a call through to his counterpart, China, and the call was not accepted. I mean, when we're at that point between the superpowers that they're not talking, uh, we're into a very vulnerable area where cues can be misinterpreted, and this can lead to uh, much greater consequences than the simple shooting down of an unmanned object. Uh, if an aircraft with Americans or um, you know Western allies of some kind are on board, then that needs to be responded to uh, when all of this perhaps could be diffused by uh, you know simple diplomacy. Yeah, uh, and Mark, I, I, I think that um, we're expecting to hear from the uh, Secretary of Defence uh, in the next couple of hours, perhaps, on this exactly. And the fact that the, the, sort of the hotline between Washington and Beijing seems to be breaking down will be of huge concern at this point. Yeah, there's a really fascinating story that, that, that emerged about a year ago, which, which really shows how important that hotline is. Um, under the Trump administration, uh, the Chinese had got wind completely incorrectly uh, that America was about to attack China. Uh, this emerged in, in a book that was written about Donald Trump uh, a couple of years ago, uh, which has since been confirmed that Mark Milley, who's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the top American general, had to call his Chinese counterpart, counterpart in Beijing to say, you might have heard that this is about to happen. It's not. It's a mistake. Take my word for it. And the Chinese uh, general did take his word for it, and everything calmed down. That is a very, very clear example of why these hotlines are so important uh, and as, as, as has just been said, that hotline did not work last weekend. As soon as the Americans shot down that balloon, uh, Lloyd Austin, the US Defence Secretary, picked up the phone, tried to call the Chinese Secretary of Defence, Minister of Defence, and the call was not accepted. That's really, really worrying. And I think you can see how this ratchets up, because although the Americans uh, may uh, take, take them at face value, maybe they haven't got any uh, spy planes or spy drones over mainland China at the moment, but I'm sure they've got um, uh, spy apparatus uh, in the area around southern China, for example, or, or Taiwan, the renegade province, as China calls it. They have probably got surveillance activity taking place in areas that China claims even if it's against international law. Now, if China sees them as being aggressive in areas that they claim, you can see how they, they, they then may escalate. Uh, and obviously, the ultimate concern is a manned aircraft being shot down by one side or the other. Uh, that changes everything. Yeah, uh, Thomas, come back in on that. Um, with your experience as Chief of Defence Staff, how do you turn down the tensions at a time like this when the phone calls are going unanswered and when there is so much uh, mystery surrounding um, what's actually happening? Yeah, well, I, I think in the back rooms um, of, of the nation uh, that could react, in other words, the United States in this case, it, you need to really put the breakers on. Uh, you have to make sure that the most aggressive voices in there are toned down a little bit and the moderates uh, get to speak out. Um, it, you know, nothing is so bad that it requires a massive response uh, or a, an immediate response. Um, you know, I, I certainly... Uh, elected politicians are under pressure from uh, the opposition and from their own uh, civilians. Part of that may explain why these uh, balloons have been shot down. Um, you know that uh, President Biden took a lot of heat on this. Um, you know, when we're talking about uh, these things that could lead to much greater confrontation between superpowers, you have to make sure that those uh, things become more bipartisan uh, and toned down from one side. 
continue to try and open those discussions. Uh, you know, that's a great story about Mark Milley with his uh, Chinese counterpart. Uh, you know, it, that speaks to the value of keeping those lines open. It certainly does. All right, gentlemen, uh, it's been a great discussion. Let's just go to a, a final sort of thought and question here. And we've, we've kind of touched on it, but this is about the way that we're monitoring the skies and we're seeing these objects up there. Do you think that what's happened over the past few days is going to lead to an increased um, visibility for these kind of objects? And uh, should there be more money and research put into identifying them early to try and sort of move away from there being any um, disagreement or misunderstanding about what might be up there? Nick, first to you. Yeah, absolutely. We need to de uh, delve deeper into this. Uh, I mean, this was a very serious security breach. By all accounts, the signals intelligence array on the first balloon was capable of identifying and perhaps intercepting communications, perhaps very sophisticated systems. So, uh, you know, we, we've talked about the four that we've found. How many have we missed? Uh, absolutely. More research and investigation needed. Uh, and Thomas, from you, do you expect to see, you know, the radars, the apertures being opened even wider? I mean, that, that would suggest that perhaps we're picking up a bunch of stuff that perhaps we maybe cause a bit more confusion than it's worth. Right. And, and I, I think that what uh, will happen as the apertures open is they'll also be honed where they're looking. So uh, looking at approaches, uh, stratospheric approaches to the west, not going to pick up a lot more. It's it's not like opening up your apertures and low level radar and starting to pick up Cessna 150s and Piper Cubs, things like that. Um, but but I think it's it's very important also to recognize uh, that most of the sensor equipment on the ground of continental U.S. and uh, and Canada. Uh, dates back to the 1980s. Very little of it has been upgraded. Now, there's been a lot of talk uh, in recent months by uh, uh, elected politicians in uh, Canada and the United States that billions will go into this in, uh, in coming years. Uh, I'm pretty certain this will uh, accelerate that process. And some of that will go towards ensuring that slow-moving objects are uh, picked up with greater efficiency. Mm. Uh, and final thought from you then, Mark, as we've seen the way that the US uh, politically uh, has responded to this and militarily responded to this, the next time that this sort of thing happens, next time that it's picked up and it comes into the public domain, I mean, what kind of response are we expecting to see? Because you have to be very careful exactly how this next one is dealt with, I guess. Yeah, so look, I, I think you talk about the public domain. I think that is the reason we're talking about all this. Had the Chinese balloon not been spotted by a member of the public in Montana um, uh, the week before last, uh, then they, it may well ne never have been made public. It may, the Americans may have let it float on over the, uh, over the continent, over continental America, out into the Atlantic. Um, they may have judged that it, it had not picked up a great deal. They may have learnt something from it. And then that would have been it. The apertures, the filters on the radars wouldn't have changed and all of these new UFOs wouldn't have been um, discovered. The point that they have uh, is probably helpful for the Americans because they now know the extent to which this is happening, if indeed it is the Chinese pushing the boundaries, testing America's uh, red lines. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think politically it, it's very difficult for, for President Biden. He needs to be seen to be strong. Um, he's facing an election not, not that far away if he stands again. He wants to be seen to be strong. Uh, he's facing criticism from the right of politics. But at the same time, he knows that diplomatically, as we've discussed, this is very delicate stuff. It certainly is. OK, uh, Mark Stone, our US correspondent, Thomas Lawson, former chief of defence staff for the Canadian Armed Forces, and Nick Pope, a UFO investigator for the Ministry of Defence here in the UK. Appreciate it both. All uh, guys, thank you very much for being with us. All right. You are watching Sky News and it's still to come. The report revealing Liverpool fans have been cleared of any wrongdoing following the trouble at last season's Champions League final. All the details coming up after the break.